Hello, viewer, and welcome to Spotlight here on Hope TV, where you look and live. And on Spotlight, we are always doing our very best to bring you persons who are changing, transforming our community in the direction of light and by the power of God. And we are so glad on this program today uh, to have with us Kingston Ogango, uh, who is the Alpha Africa Ministry Director. And he's definitely not new to Hope Media, so we are very happy to have him talking about evangelism at such a time as this. Kingston. Hello, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, looking good. Thank you. You look sharper than ah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely, you're welcome back here. This is yes. a place that you are definitely familiar with. Yes. Uh, you've played a big role uh, yes. when it comes to the uh, where Hope I hope media is today, so yes. um, we appreciate that. Thank you. And to know that Thank it's a place you. you can come back to even yes. after yeah. you know, going to serve God at another institution. So yes. uh, welcome back. Thank you. I mean, it's hope is always at my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a place where you can't run away from home. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. You great, may go great. away and but come back home. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. And, uh, you know, just talking about that, yeah. you and... Um, leadership. Yes. Because you've been in a Christian leadership, worked with Christian organizations consistently. Yeah. And um, uh, of course, one of the things that is very important for us to know is what drives you? What, 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 what's, what's the passion you have there? I think the biggest passion I have is people. Mm -hmm. This transformation of people. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the biggest and most important arsenal God has given us. Arsenal is a bit, uh, you touch some nerves when you talk about I'm arsenal. I'm not talking about the football you know. club. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, God mm. has given us the word of God mm. and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That is the transforming agent that brings change in people's mm -hmm. lives. And so if I can be able to use the skills, the talent, and the power of the Holy Spirit mm. to be a change agent, then I want to be there. Okay. Yes. Transformation. Transformation. And um, we are, the context we are in right now. Yes. I mean, COVID will be memorable, yes. you know, for yes. the longest time. Yeah. I think even history, even those who maybe are not conscious of it right now, will yeah. read about it in history. Exactly. Yes. And how it turned around so many things. Yeah. Uh, and uh, from your leadership, from your experience in the church, yeah. and... Now, COVID, yeah. uh, how would you say the church is responding uh, to the whole dynamic of transformation in terms of context? Well, I see two kinds of different ways church is responding. But those who have been adaptive, they said, well, God has brought this. We need to move on. We need to change. We need to find out how can we go to the next level and continue with what we have. Mm -hmm. Then we have a second level that are saying, let's wait and see. Mm. Maybe this thing is just short-lived <laughs> and we will go back to where we were. Mm -hmm. And so I have seen that happening a lot in the church. And it's not only here, but across Africa. And some parts of the world you hear about the same thing. So that those churches who are saying, we need to change, we need to adapt, what is God saying? And, you know, they're stepping in the season and the time. Mm -hmm. And they know that this COVID is God's ordained mm. to bring certain changes. They may not understand the whole picture, but they know that God has ordained this for purpose and for this season and time. Mm. And then the, those who are saying, you know, we used to do church like this. We can't change. We had sacraments. How can we move away from our sacraments? Uh, you know, how can you administer <coughs> sacraments online? And many mm -hmm. other things, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, definitely a time for us to really think yeah. and uh, discern yeah. a lot of yeah. things in terms yeah. of the church going forward. Yeah. You know, one person said, uh, yeah. and this is something that is close to your heart, media. Yeah. Yes. Uh, somebody said that uh, what will make a distinction between an effective church yeah. and one that is not as effective yes. going forward yes. is technology. Yes. What do you say about that? Yes, the two things I think media brings, and uh, a lot of times we have made sure church is efficient. You know, the program works, you start worship at this time, 
the song ends at this time, mm -hmm. the someone starts at this time, it ends at this time. So we are efficient. But many times we are not effective. And you know what media helps us do is how can we be efficient mm -hmm. while we also remain effective? And because you see, we are in a space, especially now when you look like Africa, uh, the statistics show us that Africa has a very young population. Actually, it's the youngest continent with the median age of 19. Now, this is an age of people who are exploring. They're looking for things. They don't understand things. They're not communicated to the same way we used to be communicated to or Pastor Buri are communicated to. They are, their fingers are fast. They are on media. They are on technology. Mm -hmm. And so we have to get to a place where we're saying, this is a tool that God has placed in our hands in our season that we may use to activate the gospel mm -hmm. because the word of God doesn't change. It's everlasting. Mm -hmm. But everything else is ever-changing. Mm -hmm. And so how do we take the everlasting, using the ever-changing to become effective and sure we are reaching people who want to hear the gospel? All right. It's a good yes. line there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> taking the everlasting. Yes and bring it to the ever-changing. Yes. That's, that's a good line right yeah. there. Uh, and uh, yeah. which is a good place for us now to talk about Alpha. Yes. Uh, especially because of that everlasting yes. and the ever-changing yes. and the need for transformation. Yes. Uh, so tell us more about Alpha. Good. So mm -hmm. maybe in a simple way to yes. describe Alpha. Alpha mm -hmm. is a tool that creates space where friends, family, and others feel happy to bring their friends mm -hmm. to explore issues of life, faith, and God. Mm -hmm. You know, in a typical church service, if you're giving a sermon, uh, nobody can raise up their hand and say, Pastor, you know, I didn't understand that point. Can you repeat that point? Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate that point? So we're very prescriptive in our administration of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. But there are people who are in those congregations who have many questions, questions about life, how can a good God mm. have allowed a pandemic to take my mother, my family, my business? Mm. They are wondering, is there really God? If God was really there, why is he allowing all these things? Mm. So Alpha creates a space where people can come and ask questions. And the leaders don't have to have answers. You know, again, if you look at now example of a Bible study, the leader must be having answers to that but we're exploring together. Mm -hmm. And so what we've created is a space where we have tools that bring the answers from the scripture based on the word of God, but people discuss, have open discussions, mm -hmm. raising all sorts of questions, but finding answers. And as we go into our closets and pray for them, God also reveals the hearts of men and we reach out to them using the tool of Alpha. Mm -hmm. And so to Alpha is just a tool of evangelism, mm -hmm. trying to reach out to people, especially those who are outside the church. And you find when we say outside the church, sometimes people are saying, okay, we reach, the evangelism should be out there. But sometimes we have people in our homes mm -hmm. who don't believe the gospel, who need to be brought into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so the way I see Alpha if I use the Bible, for example, Pastor Buri, is um, three stories that make uh, very impact for me. Mm -hmm. The first story is a story of Andrew and his brother, Peter. The Bible says Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. Jesus appears on the scene. He follows him. He becomes his disciple. And when he has gone and seen where uh, Jesus is, he runs and tells his brother, Peter, come and see. I have met the Messiah. Mm. And so he brings his brother to meet Jesus. The next story in the book of John chapter 1 is the story of Philip and Nathaniel. Philip was a disciple of Jesus. Nathaniel was his friend. And so he begins to speak to Nathaniel about the gospel. Mm -hmm. And you know how Nathaniel the skeptic says, what, can go what good can come out mm -hmm. of Nazareth? Mm -hmm. But what does uh, Philip tell him? Come and see. So, so the first story is a story of a relative, a brother. Mm -hmm. Second story is a story of a friend. Then the third story that I love also is in John chapter 4, the story of the Samaritan woman. A woman who was wretched. In fact, 
she, she didn't even know which number of husbands she had. <laughs> she was not schooled in the school of discipleship and evangelism and missions. But she comes and meets Jesus at the well. She hears the gospel. It touches her so much. And the Bible says she ran into the city and told the entire city, come and see. Mm. I have met a man who told me everything about myself. Now, this is somebody who was not in our normal setting. We will not put her in any pulpit. How can she qualify to be an evangelist? But yet the Bible says she brought the entire city. No schooling and everything. Mm. So three important stories mm -hmm. of the invitation. And so Alpha also creates that invitational culture mm -hmm. within the church. How can we be inviting mm -hmm. friends, family, and others who we may not know to come and experience Jesus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I like the stories. I've never seen them that way. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, mm. uh, and also the, the power and beauty of invitation. Yes. Now, you, you talked about a place where, Alpha being a place where people can ask questions yes. and engage them from a biblical point of view. And uh, that fits quite a bit when you think about our world being today yes. a questioning world yes. and uh, being a very secular space, yes. right? Uh, and uh, many churches sometimes are unable to engage yes. that reality yeah. of questions yes. and uh, living in a secular space. Yeah. Um, and how would you say that Alpha would support the church yeah. in that? So first of all, as a ministry, Alpha as a tool, we do not operate outside the church. Mm -hmm. We work through the church. And so we come within the church to help the church to support them to go out and do what God has called them to do. And so when we provide these tools, then we have given an arsenal in the hand of the church mm -hmm. to go out and reach out to the other people, especially young people, as we are saying, questioning. Mm -hmm. You know, the Gen Z, you know, research tells us they don't just agree with everything you say. Mm -hmm. You know, and many times, I remember once I used to be very frustrated with my son. I'll, write, I'll call him and say, where are you? And he asks me, why? Now, in my generation, that was a very offensive question to ask your father. You get a big beating. <laughs> you don't go there. <laughs> but you see, mm. he doesn't mean badly. He's just questioning. He wants to understand. And so what we do with Alpha, how do you bring these questioning minds that may not fit in a church setting in terms of on a Sunday service, they have questions about God. They have questions about life. Why is life treating me like this? About meaning. I don't even know the meaning of life, mm -hmm. you know. And we've seen, according to research, the rate of suicide and people losing hope in their lives. And so what Alpha does is creating that space. You as a church leader, bring these people together in small groups where they begin to discuss these issues. And as they journey in finding out the basics of a Christian faith, who is Jesus? Why did Jesus die? Mm -hmm. Why did he die for me? How can I have faith? And as they journey through that, they begin to build a basis of their faith. You know, Peter says in 1 Peter 3, you know, how he says we must have the assurance that we can be able to give an account of our faith. And so how will we get that unless we have journeyed and people have understood how it... And so also Alpha, what it does is it helps churches challenge their traditional models mm -hmm. where... When people want to get born again, which is a valid model, we are not saying it's bad. We'll call an altar call, they'll come, they get born again. Then you leave, leave them to go back into the congregation. They have reacted to the gospel at the spur of the moment, but they have not understood why they believe. And that's why when they are faced with challenges, many of them walk away from the faith because they're thinking, this is not what I signed up for. And so we want Christians who are grounded, people who understand. And so by the journey through that, and then we, are, we teach about being powered by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because, you know, everything else we can do can just sound like a good program. Mm -hmm. But if it is not empowered by the Holy Spirit, then it's not able to reach and transform the lives of people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, it's interesting to talk about the church and the model, the yes. traditional model. Yes. Uh, and um, when you think about the church today, yeah. um, and... Being living in a time when 
knowledge yes. and information. Yes. It's big. Yes. Actually, uh, I remember one young, one young man yeah. uh, saying, uh, yeah. he was leading a service. Yeah. And just that way, he said why he comes to church. Yes. <laughs> and one of the things he said, I come to church to learn something new. Yes. Right? Yeah. And that was very interesting when you think about it. Yeah. And that also would speak to the model of the church today. Yes. Uh, is the pulpit yeah. a channel of new information? Yes. Is the pulpit a channel of knowledge? Yes. You know, uh, because preaching sometimes is so many things. Yes. So how does Alpha then yeah. uh, inform the yeah. pulpit yes. as a source of knowledge? Good. Mm -hmm. As we said, you see, uh, when and this is you've rightly said mm -hmm. it. You know. Uh, People are looking for knowledge, they're looking for information. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have made sure the gospel is very complex. You know, when I'm preaching, I'll tell you, you know, the Greek word says, <laughs> the Hebrew word says. Yeah, now, yeah. the guy who is coming to church mm -hmm. has just lost a small business. Mm. They want to see, how can that information you're giving me transform my specia, my anxiety, my pain, mm. my struggle? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that Alpha has done is we've made it very simple. Mm -hmm. It's not simplistic, but it's simple. Mm. So that anybody can be able to connect with it. We, the language is easy. So it is not complex language, theological, jargon, big words. They're all good. But I always say they're good for you as a preacher in the closet to prepare the sermon. But those people who are out there have just looking for points of connection. Mm -hmm. How can I connect with this word of God? And so in Alpha, it is simple, it is straightforward, it's not complex. Mm -hmm. And anybody can interact with it, however basic your knowledge of the word of God is. Actually, it is made for those people mainly who have no connection with the word of God. Mm -hmm. They don't even know what does the Bible say. If they don't know what does Matthew 8, 28 say, Matthew what and that. They just want to find out if this God is really there, mm -hmm. how can I know him? Mm -hmm. A point of connection. And so we journey with people with that. So keeping it simple, but keeping it profound, mm -hmm. best in the word of God and digging out the truth of the word of God mm -hmm. in a simple way. Remember the stories of Jesus. In fact, sometimes when you listen or read the word of God, you think Jesus' stories were a bit too simplistic, isn't it? He tells you, you know, a farmer, a man, who, a man was journeying from this place. You know, he, you know, he gave very simple stories, mm -hmm. but they were very profound stories. And so that's the same thing people are looking for. They're mm -hmm. not looking for the complexity, but they're looking for the truth that is best in the word of God. Okay. And the truth of the word of God should be able to reach a professor, and an old woman in the village mm -hmm. who has no schooling. Mm -hmm. And that's for me what I believe we, we intend to do. And so Alpha brings that ability okay. to uh, allow anybody, anywhere, mm -hmm. in any s sphere, to interact with the word of God. All right. Yeah. You know, um, in today's church, yeah. uh, Kingston, the word invitation is pretty risky. <laughs> because um, yeah. some churches, as they say they are welcome. Yeah. I mean, they are welcoming, yeah. but not everyone is welcome. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's qualified. Yeah. Uh, and now here you have um, Alpha yeah. and it promising to engage anyone's questions. Yes. And uh, I just want you to tell us and to tell the viewer yeah. how, how open yeah. is Alpha? How open is it? Who is, is it like a qualified invitation or is it open, open? If you are questioning, you want to know about the Bible, just come. Mm. It is as open as open can be. Mm. Because, you know, um, look at Jesus, his ministry. I keep going back there because it's a blueprint. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say, you know, you look this way, you can come. He goes to Zacchaeus, he's on a tree, tell him, I want to come down, I want to go into your house. Mm. He's a thief. He's a tax collector. He's not somewhere who should be where a man of God should be. Mm. But he invites them. The woman who is caught in the act, Jesus invites her. And so the invitation was for all, mm. all. 
In fact, it says, come all ye. Mm. It doesn't matter how you are. And so at Alpha, we say everybody. Those who are skeptics, mm. those who, are, uh, who have no faith, those who are struggling. Because the power, we can't underestimate the power of the word of God. In fact, the Bible says it's sharper than any double-edged sword. As we expose people to the word of God, it cuts. It begins to bring them to the spaces we are. And so in Alpha, we say, as a church, invite anybody. Because Jesus went out to the fringes. He went to the margins. He went out to the places where church leaders will not go. Actually, if you read through the scripture, Jesus, out of the ministry of Jesus, about 120 of his sermons were out in the field. Almost about 15, he had it in the synagogue. The rest of them were should, out in the... That should tell us. It should you know? tell us yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, young people yeah. who you've mentioned um, yes. uh, in this conversation, the way we reach them yeah. is sometimes, it's important. When you're engaging young people, yeah. um, when you're engaging this generation that yeah. is... Even the older ones are heavily influenced by the youth of yes. uh, this generation. Yeah. I would want to know the methods uh, yeah. that are the tools or yes. um, you know, just that strategy yeah. uh, in terms of communication yeah. that Alpha uses. Good. Mm -hmm. So Alpha has, uh, the Alpha tool is divided in age demographics. Mm -hmm. So we have what we call the Alpha Youth Series. And this is basically aimed at reaching young people between the age of about 9, 10 to about 17, 18. Now, the Alpha Youth Series is made in such a way it interacts also with the way young people like to interact. Mm -hmm. Now, a typical Alpha has uh, three basic things. The food, which is our hospitality, and then the talk and discussion, and then, uh, I mean, the, the talk, and then the open discussions, which is the last thing. And then... And so what a youth series does is we start with some fun, sometimes of games, icebreakers, singing, dancing, and all that. Mm -hmm. And then we sit down and have, watch this. And now in the youth series, it is broken down. It's about 30 to, uh, 25 to 30 minutes mm -hmm. to watch the series, but with breaks in between. Why? Because again, young people, their concentration span can be short. Mm -hmm but they also want to take information in manageable pieces. Don't flood me with a whole summon of 30 minutes and then ask me questions. I want to be involved. As you say something, can I say something? Mm. Can I interact with something? And so that's how it is. And so the youth series is made for young people and it is vibrant and they come, come bring in your fun, make fun. Mm -hmm. And so whether it is in person, again, we've learned that because of a COVID season mm. or online, we still retain those three spaces. Mm -hmm. If it's online, of course, food will look different. And young people are very innovative. They are taking pictures of food and sharing with their friends and, you know, and having fun about that. Mm -hmm. Or sending a rider to drop some food mm -hmm. to their friends. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they have icebreakers and games. Mm -hmm. And they have time for interaction. Uh, and what does that do? it brings down everybody to the same level. Mm. When you have played together, you loosen up. Mm. If you came uptight, you loosen up. You begin to open up. Mm. And so the games also create that space where they're relaxing. And then, and then now they watch the talk, which is now principled on issues, but also has scripture in. So it's not just nice movies, mm. but also the scripture is in there because whatever we're doing is from the scripture then you allow them time to ventilate, discuss. What do you agree? What don't you agree? Mm. And that's why I was saying the verse that uh, Peter says, we have to also help our young people to be able to know why they believe. And the generation, the Gen Z, and uh, the generations after, they want to know why. Mm. They can't just believe because you said it. You know, in our days we were told, I have said it, you do it. Now they want to know, why have you said it? Mm. Can I try it? Can I experiment it? And so that's how a youth alpha series. Mm. Then we have the adult series, which is a little longer, but it also follows the same. So there's food, there's talk, and there's discussion. 
And so all of this happened in small groups. So alphas happen in small groups. And we encourage a small group should not be more than 12 people. And that 12 people is a host and one or two helpers. Mm -hmm. For the simple reason, the host, why we call it a host and not a leader, if you're inviting people to your house, what are you? You're a host. Mm. And a host does not dictate. A host makes sure everybody is having a good time while they're in their house. If they ask where is the toilet, you tell them the toilet is there. But you don't answer every question on the discussion mm -hmm. table. Mm -hmm. And so that's how an alpha is. You allow people to bring the conversation and then you allow them to experience. But we also have a very important place in alpha, the space of prayer. Mm -hmm. So praying for the needs within the group and sometimes you as a host following up People who came on the study and say, you know, I noticed today you're on the study, you are not speaking, is there anything I can pray for? And so we believe as Alpha, the power begins from the closet. And that's why even when you're coming here, you may not answer anything, because we don't need to defend Jesus. Jesus can defend himself, but we pray, we ask God, we pray for the people who are coming, then we allow them to have an interaction mm -hmm. with the gospel. Okay, Yeah. great. Uh, we'll take a short break yeah. and then we'll come back. Uh, we, are, we are talking to Kingston Ogango, who is the Alpha Africa Ministry Director. And uh, we are learning about Alpha and the way it is an amazing tool uh, for evangelization for any church uh, at this present time. We're taking a short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <music> Viewer, welcome back. Uh, this is Spotlight, and we are talking to Kingston Ogango, who is the Alpha Africa Ministry Director, and talking about evangelism at such a time as this, and Alpha being such a great tool uh, for reaching out to people, inviting people to the gospel in very creative ways, but very profound ways at the same time. You know, um, you know evangelism, right? Yeah. Uh, because um, it's a question that we have to keep asking and refreshing ourselves about, yeah. mostly because it, it goes, to, it's kind of people just lose it. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, the, the, the people no longer you know, reach out to others yeah. as they used to. Yeah. Uh, there's a time when, uh, when you immediately you know, come to know Christ. Yes. You know, the next day you're going out to tell people about it. Yes. You know, about <laughs> your experience. Yes. And about It was almost yeah. part of the equation. You know, yeah. Yeah. you receive Christ, tell others about exactly, it. Exactly. But now it seems like you receive Christ, enjoy him. You know? Yeah, it's personal. Without necessarily, yeah, it's exactly <laughs> personal. Yeah. yeah. What, what did you say to uh, yeah. that perspective? Yeah. I think a lot has shifted, uh, and not just here. If you look at the early 70s and the 80s, and it is actually statistically proven. Africa is the most evangelized continent. Mm -hmm. You know, from the days of T.L. Osborne and uh, Billy Graham coming to Africa, mm -hmm. Bonke, and many other evangelists. Mm -hmm. And so we are at a point where we need to re-evangelize Africa mm -hmm. because we stayed in that space and our evangelism is dying. And what you're saying is very profound because when we go born again, we even had budgets. <laughs> You know, I'm born again, I'm saved. Mm. And so we, we walked with that because we had this pride to do. But I think what we need to do is take back ourselves to the space we are. Some of the statistics we have seen, uh, it is said Kenya is 86% Christian, according to the Kenya Bureau of Statistics Census of 2019. But one of the statistics that has been startling that was done by Bana. Uh, George Banner Group mm -hmm. uh, here in Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa. But it showed something that was startling about Kenya. Mm -hmm. And it said that about 38% of people who go to church are just habitual church goers. Then 22% are about backslidden. Mm -hmm. They were either in faith but left the faith. And then another 30% are nomadic members. You know, they're in this church this Sunday, be in another church another Sunday mm. and all.
but only 10% are committed Christians who are happy to share their faith. Mm. Now, if you look at that, it's a very disturbing statistic. And I have worked, as you said, in church leadership. I've worked in church as a leader. And that is true, even of many churches. About 10% are the givers, 10% are the workers, 10% are the people who are committed to what happens within the church fraternity. And so if we are going to have that, then it's a challenge. But that has been expounded by two big phenomena about evangelism. We created evangelism to look like evangelism is for the experts and for the extroverts. You know? So the experts... You have, you have some good lines. <laughs> so the experts, experts and, and the extroverts. extroverts. Yeah. So the mm -hmm. experts are those who have school of theology, the mission pastor, the evangelism pastor, the one who, who have the knowledge about it. And the extroverts are the people like Pastor Buri, with a big voice, who have a stage presence, who can go out and call a crusade mm -hmm. and speak. And so much of the church then began to realize that Evangelism is for those people. Then we have made it even worse, where we create a certain month in the calendar of the church to be a month of evangelism. evangelism. So we wait until that time of the year to evangelize. Yet these people are with us every single day. And so when we change evangelism to those two spaces and programs and systems, where, you know, when we're doing evangelism, what do we do? We look for a police station, we go and paint it up, take some food, or go to a prison once in a year, take them some toiletries, and sit with them. Then we actually skew what evangelism is. You know, Matthew 28, 19 and 20, God gives us a command to go and make disciples. And making disciples is a continuous process. Mm -hmm you continue making disciples every single day. Mm -hmm. Until the day the world has saturated the church where there are more Christians than the world, we can say now we have stopped, mm -hmm. but we haven't. Mm -hmm. Because the statistics again are showing us if it's true that 86% of Christians, I mean, if Kenyans are Christians, it means if you took an average ratio of every 10 Kenyans, eight of them are Christians who are walking on the street. If you took 10 policemen, eight should be Christians. If you took 10 government workers, eight should be Christians. I don't think you agree with that, mm -hmm. but because how then can we also be saying we are 86% Christian while we are also some of the highest indexed countries in corruption? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then there's a problem with our gospel. Yeah. So it tells us that while we have a very big percentage of those who profess to be Christians, there's also a very high percentage. You know, it's been put about 60% of nominal Christians. Mm -hmm. And so how do you energize these nominal Christians? It is to help them to realize that they can also go out and begin to speak the gospel. Okay. Do you know your neighbor? When we lived in the estate earlier on, we knew everybody in the estate. Today, you can live in an estate and not know your neighbor for years. We've gone to that individual place you're saying, my personal Jesus, personal savior. Mm -hmm. But we need to go out. God is calling us to take the gospel out to everybody. Mm -hmm. You have somebody near you, a relative, a friend, a neighbor. Mm -hmm. Those are the, if you need to be, so all of us have been called to the missional work of evangelism. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's the office of the evangelist which the Bible recognizes. But that is a different office. But all of us have been called to be witnesses, mm -hmm. like the stories we, we looked at. Yeah, and you know, and when you yeah. talk about that, you are again coming back to yeah. the hospitality, the, mm -hmm. the, the practice of invitation yes. as a key aspect of day-to-day -day evangelization. Yes. Uh, and... Um, when you have gone around yeah. you know, the world and also the continent and yeah. also this country, yes. uh, and the churches, the faith communities that have taken up Alpha, yeah. um, what are some of the impacts that you have seen? Good. One, uh, the many impacts I've seen. Mm -hmm. One is that, you know, 
Alpha creates a relational space. Mm -hmm. And people are relational, especially young people. They're looking for a place where they will be accepted, they'll be loved, they will, you know, they want that space of relationships. How can I find meaningful relationships where I am? And so what Alpha does is when we bring people into those spaces of conversations, we begin to help a church begin to build relationships mm -hmm. so that church is not where we come and we are pious on Sunday, well-dressed, listening to one preacher, and then we quickly walk away, greet a few friends we know at the parking lot and go. But how can we create that space where people are relational? Mm -hmm. Secondly, we have seen revival begin to build mm -hmm. up within the church where people are <laughs> praying. Because you know when you go to evangelize, it is not always easy. Because mm. the enemy is out there, is active. So what does it do? People go back to their knees and say, I went to talk to my friend, Buri, and he really repulsed me. Mm. What did I do wrong? And you go back to your knees, you pray. And God gives you a, a, a courage to go back again. And so what you do, you create a culture where people are praying. The church then goes back to a place where they're creating space to pray. And you know, that's when we, we get able to do. We wait on God to help us go out and reach with boldness and courage. Mm -hmm. You know, the disciples had to wait. They were endowed with the Holy Spirit. They were empowered to go out and do that. Then number three, you create a pipeline of leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, every church I've gone to, especially in Africa, one of the things they cry is there's so much work, but very few workers. Mm -hmm. Why? Because then it is only seen as a space where uh, the pastor and a few people work. But when you create alphas within your church, what you're doing is the person who is a host and the other who are helpers, in the next group, the ones who are helping become hosts. And so what you're doing is you're giving them an opportunity right from a very basic level to exercise their leadership. They can lead this small group. They can serve in setting food. They can serve in, you know, putting chairs. Mm. They can do something within the church. And so what are you doing? You're creating a pipeline of many workers within the church because we are not supposed to come and warm pews. Mm. We're supposed to come and work for the kingdom of God and reach out to many who are outside. So you create a pipeline of leaders mm. who are coming out and are feeling, yes, I'm confident. And you know, how can you help somebody become a better leader? They become more confident when they have led in a small group than when you take them and place them on a big podium, when they, have, they build up the confidence. And so their leadership ability grows when you do that. Then the other thing we have seen is the influence the church begins to create in the community. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the gospel was to touch not only our faith, but our economics, our politics, mm -hmm. our everything. Now, when we have Christians who have been empowered by the Spirit of God and they're going out, and you know, we have like, for example, Alpha in the workplace. These are people who are going to their normal place in the marketplace as witnesses, bringing their friends, their workmates, over a cup of tea and coffee and talking about the faith. Then they become good witnesses. In fact, a, a, a very good apostle friend of mine from Uganda, he says, church begins on Monday. Sunday is garage time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people come to be serviced, to be encouraged, to be empowered, to go and do church Monday to Saturday. But we have reversed that process. We say, I am going to church on Sunday. Sunday is not church time. Sunday is a time to be encouraged, to be panel beaten, to be encouraged, to be shaped again, to go and do church mm -hmm. Monday to Saturday. And so what Alpha does is then it releases people to begin to realize that I'm actually doing church wherever I am. Mm -hmm. And while I recognize that those who have been called into offices, like pastoral offices, all of us have been called into the office of evangelists in the marketplace, wherever God has planted us, mm -hmm. where we find ourselves, our daily bread. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in media, what am I doing with that media? If I'm a, uh, if I'm a farmer, what am I doing with my farming? Mm -hmm. How am I influencing that space? And so we remove evangelism from the one leader to 
everybody and it becomes now a culture of the mm -hmm. church. Okay. You know, when, I, when, when you're talking about that, it's, it's exciting because yeah. uh, many church leaders, many pastors, um, you know, spend sleepless nights, you know, sometimes <laughs> wondering, how do I answer the evangelism question? Yes. How do I turn my congregation yes. into a reaching out congregation by themselves? Yes. And here is Alpha. Yes. And that promises to, once it comes to a community, then you begin now to practically, not just yes. by telling, but yes. equipping the, 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 the congregation to yes. become uh, people who reach out, yes. uh, to invite others to Christ yes. in their own spaces. Yes. And that's, that's an amazing solution when you think about it. Yeah. Now, um, are there specific churches yeah. or institutions yeah. that you can say, yeah. uh, this institution, yeah. um, this one has taken up this program, yeah. and um, this is what's going on there? Mm -hmm. There are many, there are many, mm -hmm. but I'll just mention a few. One is the Anglican Church of Kenya. Mm -hmm. The All Saints Cathedral is doing fantastic alphas, right from youth alphas, adult alphas, mm -hmm. in the marketplace. And there have been an example, actually, there are many other churches from across the world mm -hmm. who come and see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. We have Sitam here. We've run alpha in many spaces, Nairobi Chapel, the PCA. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's been interesting to see what the PCA have helped do not only with their congregation, mm. but also where young people are. And I remember in 2019, for example, before COVID came, we ran Alpha for 1,500 students mm -hmm. at Alliance High School. Mm. Some of them were not even of the Christian faith, so they will not come for the singing, but immediately the discussion comes, they all come. They want to hear about the gospel, they want to have an interaction about that. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, faith, other faith-based organizations. Mm -hmm. And so there are many churches. Let me say the churches are many. Pentecostal churches, mainstream churches, even the Catholic church, mm -hmm. where people are saying, can we explore mm -hmm. having faith? Mm -hmm. You know, interesting. Then we also have Alpha. We reach out to prisons. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the most powerful tools we have used is in the prisons is Alpha. And we have many amazing stories of life transforming within the prison fraternity. Mm -hmm. We've traversed a lot of prisons across this country and we work with the ministry, uh, ministry of uh, the ministry and the de department of prisons, uh, the chaplains there, we work together to bring prisons. And then of course I said the marketplace, where they are. But also Alpha has tools that help when people are within this, like we have Bible in one year. It's a tool you find even in new version. Mm -hmm. People are struggling to see, how can I read the whole Bible? I have never read the entire Bible. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a progressive way you can read a Bible verse and a devotion every single day. And it's all on phone. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy also for young people and to do that. Then we have the marriage course. So we have the premarital course and we have the marriage, those who are already married. And there are many young people want to step into marriage. They were looking for this perfect marriage that is you live happily thereafter. Mm. But do they have the principles? So we have a tool again, a video tool that young people can come in. Those who want to get into marriage can go through that premarital course to prepare them for mm. marriage. Then for those who are in marriage, either you're looking to refresh your marriage or something has gone totally wrong. Mm. How can we help you create a space a safe space where you can begin to have a discussion with your spouse to, to get your marriage back revitalized. Then we have a parenting course. Mm -hmm. So those who have children, you want to create the right principles mm -hmm. of them uh, for their faith, you do the parenting course. Mm -hmm. And so let me say, Alpha, we have tools that can help you in a lot of spaces. Mm -hmm. You want to pray, you want to do that. And then we have it in different forms. We have the film series now, which is, has been our flagship product. And you know, they say a picture is a, worth a thousand words. What people see, remember more mm -hmm. than what you told them. You may tell them many things, but they may not remember everything. But when they see, it remains in their minds and it sticks there. Mm -hmm. Then now, most recently, we've started the audio series. Why? Because again, Audio in, a, in basic form gives you the ability, you can do it in a passive way. Mm -hmm. You can listen where you're not too, you know, 
uh, video you must focus 100%. But audio you can focus as you, you are in another space. Mm -hmm. So you can be in a car, you can be whatever. And so that is creative. And I like what um, Nelson Mandela once said. Mm -hmm. He said, if you speak to a man, or if you talk to a man in a language he understands, it goes to the head. Mm -hmm. But if you speak to a man or talk to a man in a language he knows, it goes to the heart. Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea is how do we make sure we are speaking to the heart mm -hmm. and hearts of men, connecting in that space. And so audio gives us that great opportunity to do that. All right. Yeah. It's exciting. And yeah. as you speak about it, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, I know that you did say that you work mostly with churches and organizations. Yeah. What if a person who is listening right now yeah. has their street in mind, for yes. instance, they're in an, on a certain street yes. and, and they feel that I want directly to go to Alpha and begin yeah. this in my street Good. individually, yes. right? Yeah. Is, there, is there space for that? The space for that, mm -hmm. all we do is we normally say, you know, what we want also is we don't want orphaned children. Mm -hmm. After you've brought somebody to faith, where do they go from that? Mm -hmm. So we say, do it, register on our platform, do it, mm -hmm. but try and connect with that church. So register it under your church because we need that person discipled after that okay. to grow. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the Christian work is not just that declaration and mm -hmm. proclamation of uh, your faith, but it's now the steps you take to be rooted in faith mm -hmm. and to grow. And where best can that happen? Mm -hmm. It's within a church setting. Or they can start a church, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and refer the, yes. you know, the group members yeah. to it. Anyway, yeah. that's on. I, I yeah. get that yeah. it's open also for individuals yes. who are willing to do something where they are at. Yeah. And yeah. then they connect with um, yeah. uh, a faith community yes. for the sake of yeah. larger discipleship. Yes. Uh, and, um, uh, I mean, it's, it's just interesting to hear, you mm. know, uh, what, what you've talked about and the communities that have taken it up yeah. uh, in this country and I'm sure around the continent, around the world. Yeah. Now, um, you, you mentioned Nelson Mandela. Yes. <laughs> and um, language. Yes. Um, and just, this is a good time for you maybe to tell us yeah. uh, about what is the new thing yes. that's coming up um, yeah. and that's being launched yeah. uh, you know, in days that are not too far from now. Mm -hmm. So for the last about three years, mm -hmm. we've been praying and asking God how he can help us to contextualize the tools we have in the spaces we go. And uh, all over the world, one of the things that uh, our uh, former CEO challenged us was how to innovate hard mm -hmm. so that we in ensure that we are not just staying. Mm -hmm. you know, the Bible says about the sons of Issachar, and it says they understood their times, and they knew what to do. And so we were saying, God, help us to understand where we are and know what to do mm -hmm. so that we are responsive. We bring the gospel in a language people understand and taking the language to the last, the lost, and the least mm -hmm. in a way that they will be able to capture this. And so one of the things we uh, realized was to bring Alpha in Swahili. Mm. The film series, we have dubbed it into Swahili. We have created uh, short breaks within it, mm. and we have done streeters in Swahili so that people can connect in any way. Mm. Then we have the, brought the audio, and audio opens up a whole fraternity. Think about these guys on Matatu who are sitting uh, at a stage waiting for passengers. Mm. They can have an alpha going on mm -hmm. in an easy way, playing on the system of their matatu. Mm. Or think about a group of uh, watchmen sitting somewhere mm -hmm. uh, the whole day. Mm. They can have time, you know, in an audio. And you know, all of them carry a little yeah. audio yeah, gadget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or mm. border border riders mm -hmm. seated waiting for customers. And they're playing something from, they can do an alpha or mama's in a chama, mm -hmm. and you can just extrapolate that. So mm. And even this is somebody who's jogging, you know? Yes. Somebody jogging, and they have something, you know, to the yes. ear. Yeah. I mean, they can be able to yeah. so also Yeah, so bringing that, that yes. community, mm -hmm. creating communities in spaces that have been difficult because, mm -hmm. one, we do not have technology. You know, with the technology, the way things have gone, it's been difficult to uh, get everybody online mm -hmm. because of various reasons, because of cost of data, accessibility and others. So this expands that space mm -hmm. where people can come with, in a simple way using 
uh, audio, and audio can give you many options. Mm -hmm. You can play it on a small speaker, you can play it in a car radio, you can play in a cassette, you, and any other computer, whatever mm -hmm. space that God allows you, and you can allow people. If you have a kiosk, you know, you can put out a gadget. There are all mm -hmm. these guys who come and hang out, read mm -hmm. newspapers. Mm -hmm. You can always reach out to them. You know, this becomes your evangelistic tool, and they are there with you, mm -hmm. so you can evangelize them as you do your thing. You sell mm -hmm. your goodies, but also helping them. And so on this coming Thursday, mm -hmm. we'll be launching officially uh, this tool, what we call Alpha Zafilamu, which mm -hmm. is an alpha film series mm -hmm. in Swahili, and Alpha Zakusikiliza, which is an alpha audio series. We have an opportunity God has given us to reach about 135 million people in Africa with the gospel by just translating it into Swahili. Okay. Um, Kingston, it's just uh, fascinating to, again, find an organization that mm. is propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ and mm. it's keen on innovation. You know, that's very questioning, actually. Yeah. Because um, it makes, makes most of the pastors ask themselves, most yeah. of the church leaders yeah. ask themselves, most of the institution ask themselves, I mean, how are we getting ahead? How are we innovating? What's new, yes. in other words? And of course, God is the God of the new. Yes. So we can see he's a ground of innovation, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, Alpha Zafilamo, yes. Alpha Zakusikiliza. Yes. And uh, let's talk about the, the, the launch of Alpha Zakusikiliza. Yes. And uh, many people would want to um, connect with that event. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and maybe you can guide uh, yeah. us on how we can be able to connect with that yeah. launching event. So what we're going to be doing mm -hmm. is come 30th, this Thursday, mm -hmm. we'll be officially launching these tools that we've been working on. Alpha Zafilam, which is the Alpha film series, mm -hmm. and Alpha Zakusikiliza, which is the Alpha audio series. And we are going to be broadcasting it into many platforms. You know, in the days we live, we are now also have learned that we have to take the gospel mm -hmm. on the media tools. Mm -hmm. And we'll be broadcasting with Hop TV, who are a main uh, broadcasting, but also other stations, MBCI, Sayare. But also we'll be on the Alpha Facebook page. We'll be on the Hop TV Facebook page. And so anybody who wants to connect can connect by joining any of those uh, platforms mm -hmm. and following what we'll be going to do. And so come 2.30, we'll be beginning our process. Mm -hmm. Join us as we go on air and then follow with us as we uh, go and just allow the Spirit of God and celebrate what God has been doing. Mm -hmm. And as we take this tool and hand it over to the churches so that they can take Bishop uh, Calisto Odede, will be officially... Uh, inaugurating this tool and commissioning it mm -hmm. as we send it out to all the churches mm -hmm. to use it for evangelism. Yeah, yeah. and I think um, um, Bishop uh, Odede is just fitting because he has such a great passion for yes. evangelism. <laughs> yes, he uh, does. And um, we see this, uh, this new tool, the uh, Alpha Zafilamu, Alpha Zakusikiliza, mm. as going to a new frontier yes. by way of language. Yes. Right? A place where... Uh, which has not been visited before yeah. in terms of uh, the Alpha movement, yes. uh, is now being visited by this, uh, by this new tool. Yes. And we can only expect more territory yes. for God. For God, covered, yes, you know? yes, yes. Uh, and that's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, viewer, I do trust that you are inspired yeah. by this conversation around Alpha and evangelization today. Yes. Uh, and, I mean, sometimes we are always looking up to some people who are evangelists, who are uh, you know, sp spreading the gospel. But we have been reminded here in this conversation that you are mm. the evangelist. Yes. You are the one to reach out. Yes. And just in case you ask yourself, how do I do that? Yes. Now, Alpha has the answer. Yeah. And you don't have to ask that question anymore mm. uh, because the Alpha tools are available for you to effectively evangelize. People mm -hmm. asking questions mm -hmm. and then you provide a space for the answers through the mm -hmm. biblical um, uh, platforms that are provided by Alpha. And uh, Kingston, there yes. are people now yeah. after yeah. this conversation yeah. who want to connect you yes. know, with the Alpha yeah. churches that yes. want to connect faith yes. based organizations yeah. uh, 
schools that yeah. wants to connect with yeah. uh, with alpha and the material and yeah. uh, and and they will ask even individuals right yes. <laughs> yeah. who want to be part of this yeah. and uh, it is just right for us to yeah. give them a contact yes uh, and also yeah. An invitation yes. by you speaking right to the camera. So um, mm -hmm. I want to invite all, especially church leaders, to come and be part of what we're doing. And you can reach us out on uh, 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 our internet. That is on our website, kenya.alpha.org. Mm -hmm. Or you can write to us or call us on 707-998-371. 707-998-371. Three seven one, and remember, all Alpha tools are brought to you free of charge. You do not, we do not charge a single coin because, by the benevolent and generosity of churches and other organisations, they make available these tools. And so, we want also to give them to you freely. We have received mm -hmm. freely. We give, and so we want to encourage you. Please join us as we launch this product. And remember to go onto our website kenya.alpha.org or reach us out on our phone number 0707-998-371 and we'll be delighted to be part of what God is doing and stirring in your heart because we want to take the gospel to the farthest margins that God will allow us. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Kingston, yeah. thank you. Thank Very you so inspiring. much. Thank you. Even as I was speaking to you, I was feeling very inspired. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for the so, opportunity. Yeah, thank Pastor. you so It's been a much, great uh, pleasure. Great Get work. At, coming yeah, back. Yeah. yeah. Great mm. work at Alpha. Yeah. And uh, may God continue to make your work fruitful. Thank you. And may you continue to innovate hard. I thank like you. that. Yeah. You know? And <laughs> uh, viewer, clearly, um, mm. we are called to evangelize. Mm. Uh, and uh, just know that as you do that, the Alpha tools are available for free. So let's do this. Tell people about Christ. This has been Spotlight. Thank you for watching.